Okay, now we talked about metal iron, and we said that Hittites were the first people who uh, produced some weapons, uh, some apparatuses by using uh, metal iron, and they sent them as gift as well. Uh, but the uh, use of iron uh, started around 3000 BC, but uh, as I said, it was in the beginning it was because of the metal iron, but later on they discovered how to produce iron from the iron oxide, iron metal. And since they had an experience of heating uh, copper oxide with charcoal and producing the metal, probably they tried to uh, to, to reduce the iron oxide by using charcoal d during roasting, and, uh, but it took a long time. And uh, as far as we know, again, the f one of the first smelting of iron oxide to produce metallic iron was also took place in, in Anatolia by Hittites. But we don't have the written documents, we have the products, but I hope that in future, maybe 50 years, 100 years, we will see the written documents of, of, of Hittites. So we would see, we will see that they, they were the first one to use that technology. But for now, it's just an expectation. Okay. So, uh, we see that the natural iron probably was known many years ago because some people settled in Mesopotamia in Paleolithic times and they were perhaps one of the first people who found some metallic, some metals in the metallic form on the desert because it's easier to find uh, those metals on the desert compared to in a mountainous area. That's why when some people try to look for metals, they go to search the deserts. In Mesopotamia, just nearby, where they had the uh, Saudi Arabia, the desert parts. So it, we hope, we, we believe that they found some of those metals uh, on, on the desert. Well, anyway, now the first settlement uh, was in, in, in Mesopotamia, in Paleolithic, Paleolithic. Neolithic, New Stone Age, Paleolithic, Old Stone Age. Yani Türkçe'de bilmiyorum hala diyorlar mı, ben pek sevmiyorum hatırımı. Kaba taş devri, yontma taş devri, cilalı taş devri. Öyle bir şey yok dünya taşı. Türkiye'nin cilal taş lafı var mı hala? Hala mı var? Öyle bir şey dünyada yok. Neolitik demek yeni taş devri demek ama nedense bizimkiler eskiden biri uydurmuş. Ben kalktı zannediyordum hayret bir şey ya. Neyse okey. Dedikodu yapmayalım. Uh, so they settled around 14,000 BC in Mesopotamia. Of course they were not uh, like modern people. They were just you know partially wild people. But we know that there, there, there, are, there, there are evidences saying that Mesopotamia was occupied as far as 16,000 years ago. Now, the thing is that uh, in the old days, people used to think that, I mean, when I say old days, in modern times, the old days of the modern times, the, the, the, the civil engineers and architects used to think that the first houses were square shaped like this. But that's not true. The first buildings, as far as we know, were in circular shape. Now, one of the first proofs of that is Göbek. Does anyone know anything about Göbekli Tepe? Hiç duydunuz mu Göbekli Tepe? Any, anything you know? That you think that you know that your friends doesn't know about Göbekli Tepe? Var mı bir şey? Ben şunu duydum. Herhalde onlar duymamıştır diye bir şey yok mu? Anything that you heard something interesting about Göbekli Tepe? Hiçbir şey dinlemiyor musunuz? İzlemiyor musunuz ya gerçekten? Yani ilkokulda, ortaokulda biri dese abicim, ablacım ya bu nedir Göbekli Tepe biraz anlat. Hiçbir şey anlatmış, anlatırsınız bence. Yani 
It is the oldest, not true. It is the oldest temple in the whole world. Do you know how, how uh, old it is? 3,000 years? 4,000 years? 5,000 years? 6,000 years? 10,000 years? And no idea? It must be older than like 5,000 or 6,000 years. Yeah, oh, much older. But the thing is that when you look at it, this is the oldest temple and oldest building in the world existing. Maybe they had some, but they, they just disappeared because this is made out of stone. Now, it, it is circular shaped. Now, so this idea of, in, in, all, his, in all history of architecture, history of, of, of civil engineering, they all mentioned that old houses were, were like rectangle or, or, or square. No, it wasn't. It was round. Because it, when you think about it, when they look around, they see everything round, lots of things. I mean, there is no rectangular shape in the nature. The trees are circular. Some of the lakes are circular. Many things are circular. Stones are roundish. And it's easy to make something round. Because in order to make square, you have to make sure that these are 90 degrees. I mean, even if not, not 90 degrees, when you start from here, you cannot reach here. So it will be just, but circular is easy. Also, to make it a tomb, it's easy. But this is the definite proof, going back to thousands of years, that first people built their houses and temples in circular form. Now, uh, here we have, have some steles, dikilitash, these T-shaped, T-shaped steles. Uh, we don't exactly know how, how, how uh, they had their religious ceremonies here. There are some, of course, estimations, but maybe after 20 years, 30 years, we will have much more ideas about these temples since there was no alphabet, there is no written document. But still, archaeologists probably will come up with much better explanations, but so far we know that it's definitely it, its temple. In the beginning, we thought that there were no houses around it. 10, 15 years ago, uh, I was very interested in Göbekli Tepe. In fact, I, I, I had a replica of these in, in the museum. And the, the, the archaeologists used to tell me that there is nothing around it. So people, they were nomadic people, Göçebe. They used to uh, come from faraway places to that hill and then pray there and then go back home. Because if you see no houses, that's all you could explain. But now we know that there are lots of houses around it. There, there, there is another one, Karatepe, like Göbekli Tepe, another place, very similar uh, temples, and there are circular houses around it. Now this is another photograph from uh, Göbekli Tepe. Another one. Now, now the archaeologists think that, in the beginning, we, we thought that maybe they were representing human beings, no head, like this, you know, praying God. But they say, no, no, no, that's not, now the belief is that because the ones in the center are taller. So they think that maybe these things carried the roof. Because in the beginning they said, well, the temple had no roof. But now archaeologists believe that it, has, it had roof because the ones in the center are higher, and in this very center is, is, is, is uh, out of any stels, but maybe they say they covered with maybe some leather, something in the center. But around, maybe they used some, some, some wood material, and then they covered it with uh, some uh, natural materials to, to make a roof. So two beliefs proved to be wrong. People lived around the temple, and also, it had a roof. Now, it goes back to 10,600 years. That means 12,600 years ago, people were there. There is nothing, no known building in the world older than this. Don't talk about pyramids. How, how old are the pyramids? Anybody knows pyramid in, in Egypt? few thousand years, right? And do you know Stonehenge? Have you heard Stonehenge in England? They used to say that this is the oldest temple in the whole world. And it took many years. 
to convince the scientists that this was a temple. And it, it's, it, in the beginning, we thought it was 6,000 BC, 7,000 BC. Every year, the evidences show that it was older than that, older than that. And for many years, six, seven years, they did not accept that this is the oldest temple. They didn't want it. But then there were so many evidences that they couldn't deny that Göbekli Tepe was the oldest. And it was, now we know that it is 12,600 years old building and circular. Now, we found houses in this form, in the dome shaped. Not the house, of course, these are just organic material, but the stone bases are there. And we also have replicas of these in our museum. So that dates back to Chayoni, you see? In Chayoni, we have these. Goes back to about 10,000 years. Around 10,000 years ago, people were living in these kind of houses, circular. So Chayoni is one of the oldest uh, settlements also. Then they switch to this uh, semi-cylindrical uh, house plan. The plan is rectangular now. It's OK. Now it's rectangular. But you still have a, a, a semi-cylindrical uh, shape of houses. And then to the normal houses, uh, rectangular prisms. This is just very similar houses that we have in, in villages. Turkey and in many countries. Very similar. The structure is very similar. All of these stone bases are there. We are not making them up. They are there. We have the photograph, original photographs of those. And during excavations, they find more and more houses. Now, Sumerian ordinary people, of course, the kings lived in Palaces just like the palaces, similar to the palaces today. Very big houses, many people living there, many people eating, drinking there. But ordinary Sumerian people lived in small houses made out of mud bricks. But the only thing, the luxury was that their front, front of the house was decorated. Decorated with mud. Chamur, let's just see up Also reeds, kamish, uh, uh, kerpich, uh, uh, chamur. This is one of the rare photographs of a Sumerian uh, ordinary people house. Now, I don't know if you heard the name of Klaus Schmidt. Have you, has anyone heard about him, Klaus Schmidt? He, uh, he was the first person who excavated and then uh, let us see the first uh, Göbekli Tepe temple. He worked there for many, many years. But unfortunately, he died at a very young age. Uh, he, his, his wife wanted to continue, but the director of the museum uh, in Urfa uh, tried to keep her away. I don't know. I think she, she is Turkish, actually. He, the, Schmidt was married to a Turkish lady, archaeologist, professor of archaeology. But they tried to keep her away because the, the, the, since Göbekli Tepe became world famous, and the museum director, museum director, wanted to be... Uh, the, the, the, the person who is in charge, but of course, at, at last, the, the, the Ministry of Culture found a way so that I think she still works there. Excavations go on and on. And as I said, it's not only Göbekli Tepe, but away from that, towards Urfa, they found another one, like Karatepe. I, I'm sure they find other ones belonging to that. So Anatolia has the oldest buildings in the world. That's for sure. Oldest temples in the world. Oldest religion in the world. See? Even before Ibrahim, Hazrat Ibrahim, much before Hazrat Ibrahim, around 1800 BC. See? Moses, around 1300 BC. Jesus, just zero BC. And Muhammad, after 620 BC, AD. So this is the oldest temple in the whole world. So they influenced probably all the other religions. We don't know. They much before Sumerians. They had the temple. So uh, Klaus, I think, worked there about 30 years. I don't remember, but he died. Uh, he was the first one who reached to those tells. Before that, people thought that there was something there. Actually, the story is interesting. 
some archaeologists from, of course, always these kinds are discovered not by Turkish archaeologists, always German archaeologists, Italian archaeologists. They, they, they discovered that there was something there, but it, it's just like a mountain, just a hill, nothing there. No trace of any archaeological uh, evidence, no trace. But they, they, they say, Arazi çalışması, when they walk around the, the area, the smart archaeologists can, est can estimate if there is a uh, archaeological ruin under the ground or not. They, they have this talent and knowledge. So they said this is a historical place. Then Schmidt was working in another archaeological site. He heard about this Göbekli Tepe that archaeologists thought that there should be something underground. And then he went up to the hill. There was a man, a villager there, and he owned the place. He was the owner of that uh, farm, the Tarla. And he said, yeah, my parents, my grandmother, they used to say that there is something here. In fact, there was a, a tree there. Uh, I don't know if they still do it. In the old days, the old ladies and the women used to go to a, an old tree, and then they, they used to tie a piece of string, chaput balama. If they have a wish, they, they put a chaput, and then they wish their uh, the willing, whatever. So he said they used to come here and then pray. She said, our people believe that this is a secret place, sacred place, Kutsal. But he said, I don't know much. So he, he had, had permission from the Ministry of uh, Culture, and then he started the excavations. He, had, he found, of course, some money from Germany. And then slowly he started to see those uh, temple, uh, temples. And it went on and on, as I said. And he had many theories, and he, in the beginning he said, well, it's at least 6,000 BC, then he said 7,000, because a, a, as you excavated, you found some evidences proving that it is much older than you think. The small, small ceramics, things like that, shows you how old they are. Of course, since there is no wooden or leather material, you cannot carry out carbon-14 analysis. If, if you are lucky, you find a piece of wood, that's it, it, it. You have the wood, you can easily cal calculate the exact uh, date. But other, tra other, other evidences show that it goes back and back. So this, this is the first, not one of the first, I, should, I shouldn't say first, but first human-made monumental architecture because there is nothing in the world older than this, this one. But anyway, now, as the time, the Mesopotamians, when, set, when they settled in Mesopotamia between uh, two, two rivers, uh, they started to build their houses in, in circular shapes, and then the number of houses increased b uh, between Tigris and, and Euphrates. Uh, it, they started to have a, a kind of a village and then a small city, and they started to use bronze, and then later they started to use iron, as we mentioned before. Now, here we have a, a relief uh, of uh, uh, King of Lagash. Lagash is one of the Sumerian kingdoms in Mesopotamia. As I said before, Mesopotamia was not a unified empire. They had many small city states, city states. So there was always war. The funny thing is that same thing was in Anatolia. In Anatolia, there were always wars. They were fighting with each other all the time. All the killing each other, stealing each other's stuff, raping their women. All Anatolia and Mesopotamia were the same. So that's why the, the, the, the, the civilization did not flourish enough or early enough in, in Anatolia. Because there were always wars in Mesopotamia and, and, and there. So here is a, this is uh, the king of Lagash in the front. He is uh, going to war, but if you notice, they have some spears, muzrak. They're, uh, th they are usually uh, uh, copper-headed, but they have in their head helmets made out of copper. See? Metal helmets to protect their head. So we can easily see that uh, the, the, the, the, the war technology was developed. They also have shields, kalkan da var önlerinde, mızrak var. Bir ellerinde mızrak, bir ellerinde kalkan. Kral önde, tabii kralın önde gitti yok da. Hani öyle çizdiriyor kendisini, önde gider şeyinde. Okay, now 
Uh, we see the, uh, the, the, the, the war chariots or cars of, of, of uh, uh, Sumerian soldiers. Uh, they are not similar to Egyptian or Hittite uh, ch ch chariots or cars. They are four wheels. But Hittite and, and, and, and uh, Egyptian uh, war chariots have two wheels. But they had four wheels. But these soldiers, you can also see they have uh, helmets. And they have four mules. Sometimes they had goats or any, any animal, whatever they found. Usually mule or, or, or goats. So their uh, weapons were bronze and iron in, at that time. Now we see some iron bracelets, pins, and uh, some jewelry made out of uh, iron. So we know that at that time, Hittites produced iron, iron products they made, because we have this, but no written document, as I said before. But they can easily date them around 1200, 1100, just the iron, just the end of uh, Bronze Age and the beginning of Iron Age, okay? And, and we are lucky that they, they, they existed. I mean, they, they, they, they could disintegrate if they were under heavy rain or snow. Probably it was found on much below under the ground where what the rain cannot interpret. Inter interpret. Okay. Now, their war cherries, as I mentioned, uh, uh, was different than uh, Hittites and, and Egyptians. Uh, they had a basket, a woven basket. The chart was made out of a strong basket. Two and, and, and four wheels and two four uh, mules. Of course, in many cases, the chariots were coated with uh, hard leather, strong leather, but they used a basket because in the old days, basket was very popular. Uh, just like the uh, boats that the Iraqi people made uh, with baskets. Bahsetmiş miydik Irak'taki teknelerden? Yuvarlak teknelerden bahsetmiştik. So basket was very popular because it was easy to make. When you have trees, you can easily make baskets and were very valuable. Even today, we still use baskets. So they had two soldiers, but Hittites, they had two wheels, but usually they had three soldiers. That's, people think that that's why Hittites were more successful in the war against, uh, against Egyptians. Because they had two soldiers, and the, the position of the wheel in, in, in Egyptian cars were a little bended towards back, or to the front, sorry. So they were not well balanced. But Hittite cars, chariots were well balanced, and then they had three soldiers. One was riding the horses, the other one had the shield protecting the, uh, the, the, the, the driver or, or the horse uh, carriage man. They, they had a shield, and the other one was throwing spears. But Egyptians did not have that. One was uh, controlling the, the chariot, the other one had the spears, and also the, the, the shield, but it is, it's not easy to have the shield and the spear. Sumerians had three people. Also, if one died, two people can still ha could still handle the, the, the chariot. Now, when you look at the, uh, the, the foot soldiers, piade, they had copper helmets and felt uh, cloaks, keçe pelerin. So you can see why they used to have felt, because at night they had to sleep. I mean, now, if, I don't know if they still have, the, in, in, in Turkish army, when used to see, we used to see soldiers that they used to carry their blanket in the back. I don't know if they still do it. Böyle sırtlarında yuvarlak bir şey olurdu askerlerin. Var mı hala bilmiyorum. Belki de değiştirdiler teknolojiyi. So during World War One, World War Two, always when you looked at a soldier, uh, they carry their blanket in the back. In the back, they had their blanket like this, like a sausage.
they carry it in the back. But now we see that Sumerians were smart enough to use it for two purposes, to protect themselves from the rain, etc., and also after their sins. Also to use it as a blanket, you know, kapati. Pazartesi burada olduğum bildiği için herkes arıyor. Dersten çıktım sanıyorlar. Okay, sorry. Okay. They, they, uh, the, the, the, the light infantrymen, piade again, uh, they used to carry uh, uh, battle axes, small balta. And also small daggers, hancher. And the thing is that they also used uh, slings, sapan, and also arrow and, and, and, and uh, bow. Now we see again the uh, soldiers, foot soldiers. We can see again that they have the uh, copper uh, helmets and short spears. The ones on the chariot, they have longer spears, but uh, foot soldiers, uh, they carry short uh, spears and some daggers. Yüzde savaşacakları için büyüye gerek yok. Ama şey, arabada olduğun zaman uzaktan geçerken çarpmak için filmlerde, Roma filmlerinde falan görürsünüz büyük olur şeyleri. Ama burada çok büyüye gerek yok. Zaten askerlerin yürümesi de zor olur. Taşıması zor. Bir üst üste yürüyorlar yan yana. Küçük mızrak. Küçük hançer. Savaşta da mesela normal askerler kurşun bitince kası, şey takarlar ya kasatura tak filan derler. Onunla savaşırlar. Yüz, yani mermi biter ya da yüz yüze geldikleri zaman. Dolayısıyla hiçbir zaman kasatura yerine mızrak kullanmazlar askerler. Kasatura şu kadar bir şey. Now this is the uh, gold helmet of the Sumerian king. Maskalamduk. Uh, I think that's stupid because gold is so soft. I mean if you hit him with a, with a, with a spear or anything he would die. That's ridiculous, but I don't know if he used it in the war. And we don't even know that if he, if he were at the front in the war. Probably he was in the back hiding with under many, many uh, shields. But that, that is a fact. It, I, gold is the softest, one of the softest elements, as we said before, very, very soft and easy to bend. It, it, it doesn't protect you at all. Okay. Now there is a video uh, about. Let me see if I can. Now the ses geliyor mu? O aslanlar sarayın giriş kapısı. <gülüyor> Ukrayna diyor insan bilemiyoruz olabilir Her herkes bir yerden göçüyordu yani. <gülüyor> Reklam mı bu ya?
Biri görse adam şey, reklam yapıyor diyecek. <gülüyor> Ama silemiyoruz tabii. <gülüyor> Now you see, the same family, they divide it into two. In the north, those people in the north and in the, in the south, they were fighting with each other. Because each wanted to occupy the entire land and become the king. And the funny thing is that, son kills the father, brother kills the brother to become the king. So that was the main problem. Internal fight was very common. Not only for Hittites, but we don't know much about Sumerians because they were much smaller. But the problem with Sumerians was that they were small cities, they were fighting with each other. But here, they occupied almost entire Anatolia, they went down to south. And I don't know if you notice, in the beginning, they said that they went down all the way to Babylonia, east of uh, Syria. So they moved into Mesopotamia. They, they lived there and then they came up. So they were around. That's why they had always had interest in Syria. Hittites always had interest in Syria. Of course, Egyptian. Syria was a, a state of Egyptian. Egypt. Egypt. So the Kadesh War was because of because of because of uh, uh, not Egypt. Syria. I'm sorry. E Egyptians want, was controlling uh, Syria. Hittites once controlled Syria, so they always fought for that Kadesh War. The main reason for Kadesh was that, but. Hittites were stronger than Egyptian army, they had stronger army, they kept the control of Syria after the war. Even though they signed the, the, the, the peace treaty, of course in those days all the kings were liars, so when Egyptian king and Egyptian army went back to Syria, they said we killed them all, they dest we destroyed them all, we have the victory. And for many years, whole world believed that Egyptians were the winner of the war, but that's not true. But now the historians know that the success was success belonged to Hittites because they didn't have control of Syria, but after the war they had control of Syria. So they signed the contract in Kadesh in Syria. And the, the, the historians say that the reason Hittites won the war just because of the shape and the design of their chariots and having three soldiers in the chariot. Egyptian kings used to lie all the time, and they also erased the wall carvings, the, the, the written text on the rock, and then they wrote whatever they want for their program, their own propaganda, saying that we, we messed up all the Hittites, we won this war, we won that war, he is the biggest king or biggest fora, but he wrote the letters much deeper than previous one. He erased them, but he, he made sure that the letters were uh, written much deeper on the rock. Biliyoruz kendinden sonra geleceğini, sileceğini biliyor. Bütün krallar böyle yani. Hile hurda. <coughs> now they are southerners and North Hittite people fighting.
Biz mürşil diyoruz, onlar mürsili yani. yani. En doğrusu mürşili aslında. Assassin. They are musicians. If you notice, they are musicians, not warriors. Now I wonder if you notice that it says the king was called the son of people, insanların güneşi. Japonlar da güneş diyorlar. Tanrı'nın oğlu. Her zaman kral Tanrı'nın oğlu onlarda da. When they heard that Forah called them God, all Forah said I am the God. So they said well I don't want to call myself God, I'll call myself son. But it doesn't make much difference to be a son of the people and the God of the people same. So they didn't called themselves as the son of people before when they had fight and collaboration with Egypt. They had many letters sending I and mean, they, they didn't always fight with Egyptians. They had many treaties and then uh, the daughter of Hittite king was sent to uh, Ramses II. He married him. Ramses had many wives. And then Tutankhamun died. The wife of Tutankhamun is uh, daughter, uh, the daughter-in-law of, of uh, um, Nefertiti uh, wanted King Hittite, Hittite king to send a son to marry the widow, wife of Farah, because when Farah is killed, they will easily kill the wife. And so she was afraid to be killed because she had some sons. She wanted to marry. The, the, the, the son of Hittite king, so she could preserve her power in, in, in kingdom, in Egypt. But, to, uh, what was his name? So, I, I couldn't remember the name of the prince. The name of the prince, when he was on the way, uh, he was killed. Because the Egyptian generals heard that a prince was coming from uh, Anatolia to marry the widow uh, princess or widow queen of Egypt. They killed him and then the king of Hittite got very angry. And then he suddenly attacked Egypt. He conquered Syria, but there was plague, Veba. He died of, he himself, the king died of Veba, plague. And when he came back, Anatolia didn't have any plague, Veba. So the prisoners that he took from Syria, because invading Syria was a very serious attack to Egypt. Egypt, you know, went crazy, but there was turmoil because there was no king. But when he came back, <laughs> he soon died. His one, two of his sons died because of plague and many people were dying. And then the King Mursili, there is a prayer of King Mursili, says, he prays to God to stop plague because plague doesn't go away. It's, it's very, very contagious disease. He prays to God, he says, God, my family made many mistakes. 
my ancestors killed the king. One of the kings was killed by his father. He says, but it's not my fault. It's, it's, it's, it's, it's a very sad prayer. He says, the sons pay for the sins of their fathers. I am one of them, he says. Please don't harm my people. They didn't do anything wrong. Please forgive them. Please take away this plague. He prays and he confesses. And he says, also, my father and my uncles and our family forgot to sacrifice animal to the, to the river, to the rivers, Ephrath and, and, and uh, uh, the other river, Tigris. So he, he tries to find excuses and then he wants to apologize from the God, apologize to God so that God would forgive his country to release uh, the, the people and then take away plague. He thought that when he prayed to God, God would uh, take away the plague, but of course it took a long time. But after a while, of course, it disappeared. But we see that even the king knows the problems in the family, people killing each other. I think they killed the king by pouring molten, uh, molten lead into his ear or something like that. Kulağına kurşun eritip damlatıp öldürdüler adamı. Babası kral oldu. O da onun oğlu diyor ki tamam biz suçluyuz da yani halkın suçu yok diyor. Halkı affet diyor. I accept our guilt but please forgive the people. They, had, they didn't do anything wrong he says. Kız kardeşlerle evleniyorlar biliyorsunuz firavunlar. Yabancıya gitmesin diye. Hayatta asla kabul etmedikleri halde başkasının kızını almayı burada yalvarıyorlar. Kadeş. Dünyanın ilk barış anlaşmasıdır. Dünyanın ilk barış anlaşması. Babil'e kadar inmişler. Kıbrıslara deniz adamları diyorlar. Sipriyats, Kıbrıslılar.
Syria Hittites, these are Neo Hittites, Neo Hittites, New Hittites. Musa, Musa. <laughs> 